Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the food we eat. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. I suggest that the key message of today's gospel story is gratitude. Only one of the former lepers, a Samaritan, returns to thank Jesus for his healing. The other nine, presumably Jews though we're not told, go on their way without thanking Jesus for what he has done for them. So which is more surprising, that one person came back, shouted for joy and fell down at Jesus' feet, or that nine didn't? Luke doesn't imply that the nine are any less healed, simply that they were less grateful. Only the outsider, the foreign and hated Samaritan, gives God the glory, and that one returning leper shows up God's own nation, whose very name reminded them to praise God, Judah in Hebrew meaning praise. It is not only the nine ex-lepers who are disgraced. It is all of us when we fail to thank God at all times and for everything, as St Paul puts it in his letter to the Ephesians. A key tenet in all religions, the Roman lawyer Cicero described gratitude as the mother of all virtues, and other ancient philosophers saw gratitude as the essential underpinning of a functioning civilization. Studies have shown that the frequent practice of gratitude can improve sleep and the immune system, lower inflammation, release the bliss chemicals serotonin and dopamine, increase longevity, manage feelings of grief, jealousy and depression, and result in a more agreeable personality, better friendships, increased morality and closer social bonds. In children, gratitude can equate to higher academic performance, and a study published in 2019 found that, by the age of five, gratitude correlates to happiness in children. So maybe our parents were right when they always demanded, and what do you say when we were young? Gratitude is a virtue that shapes our emotions, thoughts and actions. It can make us happier and wiser Christians and better human beings. We have so much to be grateful for, for every blessing we have received, the gift of talent or health or home or a kind spirit for the good news of the love of God in Jesus Christ. When we come to worship, the very word Eucharist, you probably know, means thanksgiving. Nurturing gratitude can make us more likely to spot God at work in the ordinary experiences of our lives. Give thanks to God for material goodness, as simple as the meal in front of us or the garden outside, for beauty seen in the changing of the seasons. Give thanks to God for your relationships, for those who have nurtured our discipleship in the past, for those who journey with us today in our communities of faith, for family and friends and colleagues. Think about the small things that have made a positive difference to your life and express appreciation, perhaps through the old-fashioned habit of writing thank you notes, putting into words the truth of our belonging to one another and so weaning ourselves away from the myths of entitlement and the arrogance and isolation of independence. Even more challengingly, say thank you even when things are going badly. There is, almost always, something to be grateful for, and expressing it can help us celebrate the worth of receiving life and love. We can create a more fulfilling life by seeing and acknowledging what we already have. Give thanks for a little and you will find a lot. Not for nothing does the saying go, be thankful for small mercies. We have all experienced the problem of expressing gratitude when we don't really feel it, back to being a child again, or hearing it grudgingly given. But those same studies I mentioned earlier in this sermon also suggest that although gratitude comes more naturally to some than to others, it is a habit that can be learned if we make a determined effort to practice it, and the positive effects will be the same. Perhaps, therefore, we should revive that old spiritual discipline of listing one's blessings, naming them before God, and giving thanks. 
It's a healthy thing to do, especially in a world where we too often assume that we have an absolute right to health, happiness and every possible material comfort. Furthermore, we live generously when we express our gratitude. It can defend against pride and greed and it opens us up to connection with others, to humility and to fulfilment. Gratitude makes us more likely to want to share what we have with others out of pure gift, not in order that they might thank us in return. Whatever good things we have been given, God gave us those blessings in order that we might use them to bless others. This time of year when we celebrate harvest, this is even more in our minds than usual. And gratitude might even save the planet when we realise how fortunate we are to have been given a beautiful and bountiful earth, we might be more thankful for it and so save it from destruction. God has given us a gift of 86,400 seconds today. Will we use even just a handful of them to say thank you? You may know the beautiful general thanksgiving from the Book of Common Prayer, which says all this far more eloquently than I ever could, and so I finish with that. May it be on our lips and in our hearts, both today and every day. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>